Hey, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another pro game broadcasted by DotaComSeries.com's Loomis, as well as Shredkid. We're casting the Dwarf Rack by Open. This is round of 16 single elimination bracket. We're casting Root Gaming versus RCTIC Esports. What's up, Shredkid? How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. I am excited to watch this matchup, seeming, or mostly because I like Root. I play against them a lot. I scrim against them a lot, so I feel like I know a lot of what they're doing, so I think I have some insight into this matchup that I didn't have in past matchups, so I'm excited for it. And great, and meanwhile, I have not scrimmed again at RCTIC, nor do I know about their playstyle, but we'll truck along regardless and uh, try to figure it out. It's going to be Root Gaming on the Radiant side with first pick and first ban, and it's going to be Dyer's RCTIC. This is around 16 single elimination, so if you are out, if you're done, you're out. And, uh, but if you do move on and win the entire qualifier, you will be competing in Sweden, I believe, for a chance of $20,000. A lot of stuff on the line, but it is going to be Undying Ban. Undying's been winning every single game I have heard and I have seen, I have witnessed. I am a believer on Undying. So he is being banned on the first phase. This is insane. Yeah, who would have thought Undying is being banned in the first two picks? This is this is cool. And yeah, they've got back just because he is basically the best first pick left in the He's board. like undying, sort of. Kind sort of, of yeah. the same thing. Yeah. But uh just runs runs from melee damage and just slams people. This yeah. thing. Doesn't doesn't go uh as uh powerfully off until a little bit later. He gets he needs a little bit more farm, but generally when you pick up a bat rider and unless they super tech you with something like obsidian destroyer you assume that you have a advantage in one of those lanes you really force your opponent's hand in terms of the pick and ban and right from the get-go nature's prophet as well as Jakiro from rctic this could mean a push this highly suggests it's a push but nature's prophet could set up some you know early game ganking strat uh, Jakiro is not a bad ganker and both these guys are great counter gangers as well so leaving their options open is rctic yeah, it is. For the most part, it's a very not. Oh, it's a very flexible opening. Yes. That's what I'm trying to say. It doesn't really give away anything. You can go in any any direction from this opening. However, I am expecting Root to pick up a Shadow Demon here. One, because Shadow Demon is really good against Bat Rider, and two, because they run aggressive tri lanes with Shadow Demon all the time. Three, because they're the people who pioneered the Shadow Demon Shakira lane, which they do like every single game now because it's amazing. So I would be surprised if they didn't get him. Well, and if they don't pick up the Shadow Demon now, or excuse me, if okay, sorry, Root has the next pick, so they, you're expecting a Shadow Demon. I totally I'm, had a brain yeah. fart. And Nigma is gonna be the first pick, most likely it's gonna be the jungler, although Coop go on the long lane, and we're just waiting for that Shadow Demon right now. And we're not seeing it. Yeah, I could be, and yeah. I'm completely wrong. I love it. Whenever <laughs> like, whenever a commentator gets like 100% sure. All right. They're gonna go with this pick, and they're just like, you know what? No. No. We're gonna go Venomancer. I swear, they just, they just, uh... They're probably listening in right now. They like, did we'll this pick, just to make we'll, me look silly. We'll pick a worse hero to make Shredkit <laughs> look bad. Get rid of those, for those hashtags, Shredkit, coming up. No big deal. Alright, good transition, Shredkit. Alright, we're in the third pick here for RCTIC. And at this point, um... I'm actually not really sure what Root Gaming is doing either. I mean, they have some decent laning and early game stuff with Venomancer and Batrider, but they're kind of keeping their strategy very hidden as well. Yeah, I mean, I think that the biggest thing that Root has going for them right now is that they're going to be really hard to take down in team fights. Okay, and Naga makes a lot of sense because you can't really allow a team to get Enigma and Naga. And I, if Batrider, like, initiates on you, and, you know, blinks in and tries to grab someone, Naga just goes, okay, I'm going to sleep, and we're going to start this fight over. Right. So that basically forces the Batrider to grab Naga and only Naga and try to f kill her. Um, it really renders Batrider's initiation, at least in a team fight. Now, of course, Batrider is not just a team fight. In fact, he's not exactly a best team fight hero aside from the initiation. He is going to be your ganker. He's going to be diving behind towers, picking up people, and assisting his team in terms of pushes. I don't think Root Gaming, uh, drafting their draft so far is looking into you know late game taking on team fights against naga i think they want to at least get off very very far ahead in the early get uh, get go with the ganks and and the laning aggressions and make sure they farm a lot of gold and basically try to grind out the naga i want to say with item and level advantage yeah that's probably a pretty good way to go about doing it i mean here's what root knows 
They know that Jakiro and Naga Siren is a really potent combination, especially with the Ice Path change, because now you can like shoot it out before it doesn't have to be perfect, so they can't dodge it. Mm -hmm. So if they know that they, are, they have that much team fight, they say, hey, we can be either really aggressive early and try to, you know, get some tank items up so we can survive that. Or alternatively, I think what they have the option of doing is split push it. But I think they won't. They're going to try to defend against split push by banning out the Broodmother and with Nature's Prophet out of the pool. They just don't want that combo in there. Yep. And it seems like the RCTIC is somewhat afraid of late game Curious, both Anti-Mage and Voidus being banned on the swell. Void especially a very decent counter in a sense to Naga Siren. Um, a lot of times you can just lock her down for a long time and generally you could even kill her depending on the Void's DPS before she even pops off the Silent Siren. But seems like that's what RC uh, TIC does not want. And this particular game, again, you talked about this previously with Rubik. You talked about this. I talked about this in the past with Dark Seer. Naga's one of those heroes that, although she's not especially powerful, she's very, very difficult to draft around. And you can see the Rick Gaming is being a little bit tentative. Uh, I wonder what they're going to be poking, looking uh, in terms of the four pick because it's hard to pick an initiation base lineup. Again, you talked about Batrider zipping in with the Flaming Lasso. A sleep just stops that completely. It's hard to go for massive team fight against sleep stops everything. So you're tentative. You're not sure what you could do. Uh, and I'm sure Rick Gaming knows what they can be doing, but. For now, I'm a little bit, uh, I see, yeah. I see this as a difficult draft to kind of, uh, go on. Well, something that Root likes doing, which I really like as, as a way of approaching Dota, is they do weird stuff. Not, not, I'm not saying stuff that doesn't work, I'm saying stuff that you would never even think of a team doing. Like, they run Bloodseeker sometimes, like, they, they'll just run weird heroes for, like, to counter one specific hero and just go, like, go really far out of their way to counter a hero. So, they probably have something up their sleeve, like, I've seen them run Nakes mid against Batrider. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we're not going to be seeing that this game as they do have the Batrider. So far, very, very standard and non-weird heroes. But if something weird is happening, I'll be happy to be casting this game. Root Gaming, as you know, uh, I want to say up-and-coming American team, although they have gone through at least one roster change. I know the, the old team was led by Blitz, and now it's not led by Blitz, so... Let's see how they're going to be doing right now. You say you scrimmed against this team regularly. How are they looking right now? They, uh, they're very good. Tier 2? Um, they beat us repeatedly. <laughs> okay. No, but um, they're very aggressive. Like, that's what they do. What they've done literally every single time against me. I don't want to, um, you know, say that it, they're going to do it necessarily. But they do an aggressive tri lane with a weird hero in it. And they normally just have someone up in the safe lane farming. Like, that's their general strategy. They oh. could do a jungle enigma this game, but maybe not. I don't know. They might just put enigma on the safe lane and do... I don't know. They might do a Batrider tri lane. I've seen them do it before. Batrider tri lane is often the time very, very underestimated. I think the weakness of that tri lane is that if it doesn't get kills quick, suddenly get up, up to up to 200 gold for that magic with stick, and things become very, very difficult after that because Batrider is stacking napalm, and you're not just healing one person's magic stick. You're charging up at least multiples. So... Let's see, let's see what's going to be the case. So Queen of Pain, most likely going to be their suicide lane, but if they do run the offensive tri lane, then Queen of Pain is going to be, um, well, on the safe lane. Don't forget the possibility of Enigma going mid as well. We've seen Cinderin do some of that. Um, so, I mean, the laning versatility is all there. In fact, every single one of these heroes could go into every single lane right now for Root Gaming. Yeah, and on uh, RCTIC, I'm going to call them RCT. Woo! That yeah. was it! Yup, here's what they do. They run the gyro mid. They'll, they'll run it mid, probably. Gyro mid, okay. And then they, that Every time I've seen them pick gyro, they put a mid. They could offensively try lane it, but I don't know. Gyro, which, by the way, is actually a a uh, secretly powerful counter pusher. Very, very powerful pusher in his own right. And knocks out Naga Illusions decently, but really, Flat Cannon is a, a very versatile spell right now. But Boogie... Yep. It's going to be playing Juggernaut as a last pickup, so we are going to see massively pushing. And to be honest, a very kind of a hard to kill lineup. Twin Head Dragon is going to be somewhat difficult uh, to mow down early on because of his high natural tank. And Juggernaut with instant uh, Blade Fury magical immunity is going to make it difficult for Root Gaming to get those early game kills. It will be difficult. I mean, every single one of their heroes is hard to kill. You pointed it out. And Root Gaming doesn't have that much like fast killing early. Right. If that makes sense. They have a lot of damage, but it doesn't happen like instantly. It's slow, so, it's scales, you yeah. know, it's shadow drag, it's it's napalm stacks. It's not instant I burst you for three hundred, that kind of thing. And 
And when yep. you have things like that, you know, Tess of Fate becomes a lot stronger as a sendback mechanism as it takes a long time. That healing ward becomes a lot better when it heals the uh, percentage per second. You know, things like even teleport. Like, you could probably just teleport out against this lineup if they don't have a stun's layer on you. Yeah. But I think that the big thing that they does have going for them in terms of how they'll be able to, I guess, kill RCTIC is that... Oh, uh, a lot of pings going on. I thought I saw something on the map there, but no such luck. What Brute Gaming does have going for them is that they will be able to start fights with Batrider, and it's going to be brutal for RCTIC to respond to that. And Batrider and Queen of Pain, I mean, this is a very, very mobile lineup in that sense, especially once a Batrider picks up the blink. But let's introduce the players here. We have Monkey playing that Batrider. Lusk is going to be handling the Queen of Pain. Enigma being played by Fun, who did the picks here. And of course, Korea on the Gyrocopter. And last but not least, we have Brock Lee. Or broccoli on oh, Venom Master. That's that's creative, cute. Yeah. And on RCTIC, we are going to have Vil Vander playing the Naga. On Chen, we have Gil. On the Nature's Prophet, we'll have Fet AA. On Twin Head Dragon, we have Ruby. And finally, on Jakira, we have Boogie, and he'll be soloing mid as Juggernaut. Or maybe with the. Uh, just this, like a raw solo mid. Wow, this is going to be somewhat difficult to do. And you can see the beginning of something weird. Bat Rider will be jungling. He burns out the trees, which will make this level 1 cam extremely pullable. And he's up against, what I want to say, a dual lane mid. No, just, just Enigma coming by to steal a creep, deny a creep, and he's going to go back to jungle. So this is something that we have not... Well, I mean, we've seen once and twice in the past, but Bat Rider jungling and then doing level 1 pulls. This is sick stuff. Although he mistimed the pull. Yeah, I don't know. I do not know what's going on, I'll be honest. I, I don't know what they're doing with their drong. They might try to stack up a strong camp like a gazillion times and have Batrider try to kill it. I don't know. Batrider has boots first, which like suggests that he was going to be offlaning, yeah. but maybe he's going to try to stack a little bit for it and then switch to the offlane. I don't know. And this, this uh, Jug versus Queen of Pain mid is something that's been going on. For, oh, Jug's going to try to come and harass. Try to steal Bat's camp, but he's not going to be able to. Yeah, Somebody Jug in the Europe scene figured out Jug versus Quap a week ago, like it works for Juggernaut. What? And I, it does. I guarantee it. Explain it, that to my me. My friend, he, you can spin to dodge the Shadow Strike. Okay. And uh, a pretty good, like decent at least, less hit damage. So if you get like a Borman Shield, it negates all of Quap's harass. And uh, if you just Bottle Crow constantly, you'll be fine. One my friend I... told me about this like a week ago, and he's like, dude, check this out. Everybody's doing it. And apparently Navi did it yesterday. Well, one thing I'm not seeing right now is Boogie spinning away that poison damage, and he's getting wrecked by it. Yeah, that was that was a little bit sloppy. Uh, no gold for uh, I think I misspoke. Navi didn't do it. EG did it. But point is, it's being done. All right, well. Like, it's a new lane. Now, on top lane, we're going to have Batrider. Yep, he is rotating to top. I think he's going to try to... He's doing the Batrider thing where you try to steal the enemy's pull. Unfortunately for him, it's Golem. So not a whole lot you can do about that. Yeah, nothing. Unfortunately, well, he's gonna survive. He's got himself level two. He's gonna be checking for runes. So still being somewhat effective despite not really being in the lane. Juggernaut's gonna get that rune denied, and it's gonna have a somewhat tough time. Well, you talked about it. It it might work. So I'm gonna peel most of my time, my my eyes on this mid lane, and see effectively how how does a Juggernaut stop it? Right now, Lus is just handing it to him. Right now, he can't even go into lane. Oh, he does spin it. Yeah, there yep, you go. They spin it. And, and you uh, just bottle crow non stop. Alright. Yep, yep. Somebody just told me it was Universe versus uh, Fear this matchup yesterday or two days ago or something. Mm -hmm. And Fear won it on Juggernaut. What? All on right. top lane, we're going to have Batrider getting engaged on. He's trying to firefly. This is why he's so good at his offlane. He just runs away. He's getting stacks up on Naga. Will he go back in? He might. He's going to salve and go back in. Watch. If he gets one more stack up, he can kill him. No, he is going to run away. His Firefly is cutting short in terms of duration, oh. just barely makes it out. Of course, when you have Firefly, you know, you have every path available to you, so he, he's going to be fine. On the bot lane, Korea getting massive amount of farm. He's going to be going for a Rocket Barrage as well as um, Homie Missile. One of the more offensive way to play your early game Gyrocopter, max all those damage. Uh, don't underestimate the damage output of Rocket Barrage. It's one of the highest early game DPS if you're hitting every single Barrage. It's it's comparable to things like Laguna Blade. It's insane. It really is. The thing that always confused me about that skill though is if you check out the raw numbers, it doesn't even double in damage from rank 1 to rank 4. Like it is the worst scaling spell in the game. So I never was able to really figure that out, but it's really good at level 1. I mean, it doesn't scale well, but it still hurts like a truck. And yeah, it's still really good. Yeah, it's still really good. Uh, but it, it does scale a little bit poorly. Yeah, in the mid lane you can see, again, the Lust... 
is trying to do strato strike and boogie just spinning them away dodging them in midair so i mean hey it's working out but why why do you need freaking spin to do it can't you just get a puck in phase i mean why why juggernaut i'm just not i think it's i think it's because the reasoning behind it is that you can put your carry mid and then you can either put like a, a farming utility in the safe lane like a farming tide or farming esk is more popular mm -hmm. like night stalker maybe so you it's gain like you, more out of you it. Can, it's like you get more out of the safe lane. You know what I mean? Fair enough. Okay. And uh, again, Boogie is just spinning away. And he's going to go right back in. I guess the added benefit of using the spin is if he's charging against a Kree Whip, Kree and Pain just have to back off. So in a sense, there is some laning advantage being gained by using Juggernaut and only Juggernaut in this particular lane. Yeah, and you can't blink on him either. Because if you blink on oh, uh, kind of spin. Die. Yeah. <laughs> I think Lust has never done this lane before. Because he, he went for two in Shadow Strike, and what you have to do now is you have to completely skip Shadow Strike in this uh, in this land. And just go for the standard blink and the... Uh... Yeah, you get a two in blink, and then three in scream, and then all. Okay, I mean, so you learn something new every day. Uh, and I'm, I'm very glad that we see the Dota scene being involved. I, I want to say that right now Dota 2 is evolving at a much quicker pace than Dota 1 was, uh, where we saw you know a, a prevalent strategy that lasts like for a year or so. Right now, Dota 2 strat's been like a strat is fresh for two weeks, and that's it. And then it, people yeah. changes. It's that's what happens. It's for there's like a three day period when one team's figuring it out. Then like the week period where everybody knows about it and is doing it, and then like five days it gets countered, and then something new. Yeah, it's quick. It's and, crazy. Yeah, and you know what? That's what I like about North American Dota because people experiment. You know, not not trying to be offensive to like Chinese or European Dota, but NA Dota is some weird stuff, and it's cool. I really like it. Well, this war stuff is being done against Lust right now. I'm still waiting for this Gyrocopter to really show show his tail. Um, Gyrocopter has picked up level 6, is maxing his nuke-based damage, and he is one of the actually most powerful counter ganker in the entire game. You don't expect a Gyrocopter coming in with rockets blazing, but he does not have a teleport scroll, so it makes me think he just wanted to scale off arm. Boogie finds himself Queen of Pain, and he's just looking for mana for the Omni Slash. Does not have the range. He does! He finds a Venomancer, and that's... There you go, that's Boogie, a Juggernaut picking up a first blood in the mid lane against a Quap. Go him. Go that him. is not something you see every day. <laughs> I mean, I mean the normal the normal idea of a Queen of Pain is like, yeah, yeah, he beats every single melee hero and most of range heroes. It's Boogie controlling the lane with Juggernaut. This is insane. Yeah. Yeah, good thing there's not too much action going on elsewhere, so we're just watching this elegant dance going on, but it's yeah. going to be uh, Gyrocopter leading in terms of Siesta. Check this out, Batrider got level 5. Yeah, that's important. He's doing, he's doing really well. If he can get 6, he can just go and start killing people. And like, he gets 2 in Firefly, a lot of times you get more in Firefly as offline Batrider, because you want to steal the support's camps, and you don't have time to like stack Napalm on it, so... He does have that extra level of Flame Break for a TP cancelling as well. But as a result though, I mean, he's getting level 5, but look at Rudy, he's level 4 on Twin Head Dragon. Um, if he's sacrificing a little bit more of his own level, he could maybe slow down the uh, Batrider. And also, more importantly, Chan's about to hit 6. So this is the strategical exchange that our CTIC is getting. And to be honest, once Chan is at level 6, it really puts a drain in terms of the offensive power of Roots. Suddenly, you know, you got to have to dedicate a lot more in terms of getting those kills. Yeah, I mean, it's. I think our CTIC is going to have you know, a really good time push thing going once they get the Chen sick and Furia, who I'm guessing is going to make, oh no, Chen will make the map and the Shadow Demon, or, oh my word, the uh, Twin Head Dragon. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I think Root feels fairly secure in what they're doing. Okay. Like, they're trying to get levels up, so. Yeah. Uh, Enigma in the jungle already has a uh, Soul Ring and of course level 6. I imagine he's going to be going for the more standard mech rush. Uh, so there's not many other mech holder, but looks like the engagement is happening right now. Teleport is coming uh, from the Prophet as well, but look at the Firefly damage just almost killing. Oh no, he's gonna get the kill first. A Flame Break surprising him right now. Dual Breath is gonna be dodged, and Monkey is just playing with these guys. And there's Teleport coming in from Fun. There's a Malefice. Does he, is he gonna use a Black Hole? He has it. Is he gonna be using it? No, still holding on to it, holding on to it. Rudy, there's a Black Hole just catching them on the edge. Rudy is gonna get stacked up. Firefly backwards here, and Fat A, it's gonna be retreating no they're gonna now be chasing fun still very low he's gonna go down to a test of faith but that was a th two or three man gank against the bad rider survived throughout all of that thanks to a great tp and a black hole from that enigma that was some sick individual play from monkeys forever here's what he did 
so he's got some stacks up on it. The uh, the Naga Siren is going to go on him. And when you're off lane bat, what you can get away with doing is like going in and out of the lane so that they can't hit you really. So, they, you know, you get low and they all run for you and you run away and you keep stacking because like they can't see you. You're behind stuff. And you see them because you're flying. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, they're, you know, they get to the point where they realize, I shouldn't really be here. And then they try to run away and uh, it and doesn't the, really go so well. And a lot of time, the, the standard trialing versus solo is like, we got three hero, he's out of position. We could just chase and kill. We could take some damage, no big deal. And suddenly the stack is stacking up. You know the fire, the flame break do that last amount of tick damage, and yeah, you just don't expect that kind of damage output. And still, I'm keeping my eyes on this guy. Rocopter. He's got uh, intreds, or excuse me, he's got treads finish. Ring of Aquila. So it looks like they want to be a little bit more aggression in terms of pushing. And that rocket missile when it hits, it just makes the best sound in the game. Ding. Donk. <laughs> it's just it's actually the second best sound in the game, just right after the goal. Uh, after the the sound you hear when you get a creep kill, then the, the oh goat. the creep kill's a good one. Yeah. The PA the PA crit is a good yeah, one. Yeah, that's too. a good one as well. It's up uh, there. The rocket missiles. It's just good stuff. It is good stuff, and it looks like he's gonna be going for, well, probably a manta. It could be a diffusal. I was thinking he might go for like either Lothars, which I've seen him do before, or a dominator to just stack and then get a gazillion gold. But I guess he's just going for a more standard carry build. Yep, standard carry build. I. I... I mean, mid lane is not really being won right now. Generally, when you pick a Queen of Pain, uh, very, very safe of something like you pick up a Batrider, you just have advantage in this lane. And I gotta say, that lane was more even, especially with Boogie picking up the first blood. Phase Boot and Bottle and Juggernaut, I love this build. It makes him a lot more powerful as a mid game utility and ganker. And of course, with Phase Boot and the fact that he's mid, that bottle is gonna get refilled quite a bit. And Juggernaut's one of those heroes, once he gets off of a nice rune, I mean, Omni Slash is coming in with haste. Omni Slash is coming in with invis. It's insane. He's, he's an insane ganker in a sense. Yeah, he really is. You have so much damage output. You just need a way to set it up. So yep. if you can give him the runes as opposed to playing his, him as like an AFK farmer or pusher, he can just run around killing people. It's really cool. Yep, Fede is going to TP on the bot lane here. Looks like they want to defend that tower. Ice Path is going to miss. Deny does hit though, and now the net on Korea. There's a Rocket Barrage and his ultimate. Look at the damage output. He's going to kill Naga first. You don't want to get next to Korea. The Rocket's going to be summoned. The Rocket is going to get the kill. No, nice salva by Fede. He's going to survive at least for now. The backstab is coming in from Juggernaut. He's spinning against Korea. Korea popping his strength treads. He will not survive this one, I don't imagine. He's trying to juke. He's going to try to salve. Still great juke so far. Still juking. Still juking. Korea make a huge play right now will he get sprouted up yes he will and the omni slash will seal the deal but that's a lot of time for his teammates to come in right now they want boogie do they want boogie there's a malice right right now there is a still sonic wave you don't want to blow on a tp out but i think the sonic wave is going to do the job no oh. why you know sonic wave oh no hero is going to take the fall wow wow <laughs> there was some there was some crazy shenanigans going on right there we saw the really good juke from uh, Korea just ring around the rosy, go around the tree one way, change your way, you know, go around the other way. He let it live for a really long time. He ended up going down, but uh, eventually... I mean, he, I bought, was... he bought time for Teamy to come in, which yeah. was the most important thing, so... I was surprised that Chug got out, though. Yeah, uh, maybe he thought the uh, the poison damage or the right clicks would have been enough but, and, and just wanted to save his ultimate for the next kill. Which is a fair, you know, fair assumption to make, considering your ultimate does have a long cooldown. Um, but I, I really thought he needed that, and he definitely paid a price. Absolutely. It looks like, I believe, Juggernaut is going for a drums build, which is meaning that he is going to be active, and Naga will not be. Yep. I mean, this is uh, pretty standard when you see a Juggernaut. A lot of time he does go for the drums, and here we go. Korea will be rocketing. No, I'm very surprised that he did not just unload a rocket barrage and do some pot shaft damage. And Korea, I mean, at this point, he's very, very squishy as a carry. He finds himself a haste rune, or he's gonna have lust to pick it up. And I think this is gonna set up a top gang. Does Fat A see this coming? There is an observe ward, so he should. Yeah, he's backing off for now. Yeah, you you don't want to you know try to engage on a, a queen of pain with haste. That is a scary hero. So I think Furin's just gonna pull back a little bit, try to keep it safe. But for the most part, RCTIC just wants to keep their main tier ones up. If they're able to do that, they'll be able to, you know, really establish off of that map control and start taking tier ones of their own. Keep your tier one up, and more importantly, like you suggested earlier, make sure they're highly leveled. Chen is one of those heroes that uh, seemingly he's an early game aggressor, but when you pick up level 11, his heal becomes a very, very legitimate teamfight tool. And of course, Twinhead Dragon, all of his spells are great after the change. 
And uh, you just want level on him as well. So, and of course, you have things like Naga Siren and Juggernaut, two of the more powerful semi carries in the game. So at this point, they're looking for some slight aggression, but they're not gonna just, they're not gonna be ultra aggressive. They're not diving for kills. They're not playing the root gaming game. They're gonna just make sure they out level and perhaps even out gold the Radiant side. Yeah, I think this isn't something you see that frequently, but both teams, when like both teams are content to play safe because they both think they'll have a mid game advantage. So that means somebody's got something up their sleeve. And that somebody's means... got some trick they're ready to play. And that also means that somebody's assuming wrong, because there's only t one team that has a stronger mid game. Yeah. Only we'll one team is right. Yeah, we'll find out exactly which one is. But Monkey, he's very, very close to his Blink Dagger, just about two, three creep waves away of uh, uninterrupted farm. And once he does pick up the Blink, do you think he's gonna be, you know, leading his team for some power push to be ultra aggressive, or is this, you know, farm Blink and then farm some more kind of thing? I honestly don't know. I've ever seen him play that before, but um. If I was in his position, and I'm not him, I think that it would be better to just actually maybe get one or two small tank items up, like maybe a brace or a cloak, and then start fighting. This will just melt instantly, because um, RCTIC has so much damage. Like Omni Slash, if he blinks on someone, yes. I'll just get slashed. Yeah, you talked about the lack of burst damage uh, being a crucial factor against diving teams. And also, you talked about the importance of Song of Siren uh, kind of stopping your setup uh, if you're a bat rider, so... It is, is, it is a risky move if you rush a naked Blink Dagger like this. He's sitting 900 HP. I mean, you don't even have Strength Treads, but here comes a Smoke of the Sea gank on the mid lane. And Buki right now is just looking for Omni Slash target. He sees Enigma, and that Enigma, oh man, he's in huge trouble. Look at the face. Look at how fast he's moving oh, right man. now. He this is, is like going to have the uphill good. vision, swinging around right now, and Root Fun is trying to TP out. Let me tell you that those uh, guys are, well, it's going to just... What? I don't really know. I'll be honest, I don't know. We want the top lane here, Firefly being cast here, Monkey trying to get the kill, not gonna get the kill either. What's with people TPing out this game? When they should not be TPing out. I know. I'm well, just scratching my head right now. That could have been like an actual decision because he wants to save it for attacking a tower, not killing the Enigma. He figures, oh, Lust is going to go and he's gonna sting the Jakiro. Jakiro is backing up, he's taking a ton of damage, he's gonna get killed. Chen heals, Chen hasn't sent him back and he's just gonna die. Plus, it's gonna hit him with the Sonic Wave. Sonic uh oh, uh oh, we're about to see a dive on top. Oh, no, Korea is maybe gonna dive him. Yeah, Korea's diving to tier 3. Oh, he is gonna pull back. There's a TP goes up, it's canceled. Meanwhile, it's top rune. We're seeing Boogie is gonna get solo black hole. Poor him, but he will go down. Man, there's just action happening everywhere. Just looking at the top tier 3 dive, there's also freaking. Uh, Black Hole 1514 as you remember the Black Hole cooldown, man. That's some sick tech thing. Do you do that in game too? You should because or players should. Uh, really yeah, I do. Unique. I do it for Panda, Naga, and I only do it for Roshan. So that's. I do it for Roshan too. Yeah. Any case, looks like we're gonna see a push coming on the mid lane right now. Tier one is gonna get knocked down. Finally, Radiant team has destroyed a tier one tower. You talked about the importance of keeping that tower up. Uh, and really, once these towers are down, it makes Queen of Pain, it makes that guy copter us more effective gankers. But speaking of ganking Korea, he's ganking creeps all day long right now on the bot lane. And uh, still no sign of whether it's going to be just a pure standard Manta build, or maybe even something sneaky like an SMY. He doesn't actually need the HP, to be honest. No, because basically he's going to be in the very, very back until and you know, the team fights aren't been used. Yeah, basically what's going to happen is Bat's going to go, Enigma's going to go. He's gonna start off with the, you know, the missiles and stuff, and then once the, you know, all the stuns and stuff are used, then he'll go in. He just needs to be zippy, he doesn't need to be tanky, and that's what the Yasha's for. So all he right. can, like, run away from Jug and stuff. There we go. Rudy is gonna be dropping a couple of wards. This is a very, very slow-paced game, so it's gonna be a good time to make sure we're checking in terms of the goal difference. Radiant, not too many tower being claimed down. They're leading by three kills, but they're overall farming a lot better. A little bit over 5,000 in terms of goal lead, and you can see that it's mostly in that gyro copier. Now, that 100 is a little bit more deceptive because he's killing a lot of treants with his flat cannon. But still, it's extra goal that he's getting and uh, extra goal that Fat AA is giving up. Yeah. Well, check this out on Batrider. This is the most naked dagger I've ever seen in my life. No TPs, no wand. Okay, he just bought a TP in bottle, but... Meanwhile, mid lane, we're seeing an engage going on. Oh! Plus, is gonna just barely dodge it. Will he get slipped? Vilbander on the, um, Naga will back up. We're gonna see Prophet TP, and he cancels. Meanwhile, back in mid lane, we see Enigma. He's moving. Wants to get a black hole off. It's not on cooldown, though. Uh, Korea's taking a ton of damage. Hand of God's gonna come through and save somebody. And meanwhile, oh, top... Oh, uh, Batrider 
blinks in, gets a deny on the tower. Will he get the juggernaut? Um, if he can continue stacking napalm, we'll try to knock him backwards, but he'll get stuck. Yup, there's his juggernaut have his ultimate. Um, yes, he will. So he will use it. Queen of Pain goes down immediately. We're going to see Enigma fall. Enigma goes down. Um, looks like there was a buyback. Buyback on Queen of Pain. She's coming back into the fight. Batrider's on the retreat. He cannot get out. The Queen of Pain is coming. Whew. Sonic Wave. And, oh, this is going to be a lot of kill. Well, it's going to try, try, trying to get the, getting those kills. Let's see a blink. He's going to blink after on uh, Dubuki. One more hit. One more blink. No. The Sprout slowing him down, at least for now. He does blink forward, but loses the aggression here on Boogie. Boogie phasing out. He's going to be cheaping out just fine. Lust now on the run himself. After the buyback, did get picked up just one kill, though. Not too sure what's most worth it of a buyback. Oh, he sees Chen creeps at least running around. Now, this is a slippery fish. Less running away against multiple heroes. I gotta say, a team fight worked out beautifully for the Dire Squad. Juggernaut, not only did he get a couple kills, a couple assist kills for his team, he made it out alive. You know, he's he's using his only stash whenever it comes off cooldown, and he's just making his presence known throughout the game. Has that drums finish and also 1300 gold in the bank. And Gyro is farming a lot. Look at this huge stack he's gonna about to take down right now. But he really needs to pick up that mantle, start getting his team some extra DPS. Yeah. I think DPS is the big issue for Root. Like, we've mentioned it before, but the reason why that team fight wasn't like a massive win for Root was because they couldn't kill people fast enough. Yeah. They just couldn't. I mean, they have heroes like Queen of Pain, but by herself, it's not going to be enough. You need something else. And I think Korea has to be at something else. You can say this huge stack is being slowly multi upon. This is like a little bit Tinker and, and Beastmaster esque, but. Uh... I saw that. I saw that video. I saw that video. What, but, what, um, what tinker? Oh, oh you're, you're, you're tinkering. Yeah, tinker, that's a good yeah. one. That's a good one. Um, I wanted to point out some, something. Was, oh, yeah. This is going to be so cool. I was so excited for this. You got to tell me. Lust is going for a Dagon, Dagon Ethereal build. Who is? Lust on the Queen of Pain. He opened with the Ghost Scepter so that he could um not get Omni Slash and stop dying to that. Mm -hmm. And then uh Dagon. So I'm pretty sure he's getting a Dagon ethereal well he's got the no scepter or no no talisman he's got the staff of wizardry so yeah it's definitely gonna be a dagon build you talked about this team needing the burst damage by the way this is not a fun or joke build or anything like that this is a legitimate build it's a legitimate concern that roots having they don't have enough bursty damage sure you could get a three man back hole what is that gonna entail if you don't kill them in that black hole right so less is adding that big dps and meanwhile, they are going to just lose the bot tier 1 tower in the hope of getting a tier 2. But tel Teleport Scrolls will slow them down. A two-man Ice Path and Boogie in position. Omni Slash. Omni GG Slash. Shredding them aside. Double kill for Juggernaut. This guy's getting way too many kills. And he's he doing it too way, way easily. He's going hard in the paint. He's killing so many people. Like, he pretty much won his lane mid. He's running around the map getting kills. And he's got a ton of money. He's got almost 3k in the back. And face, and drums, and bottom. That's a lot of stuff. That's... And he's got, you know, 2,600 in the in the bank. He's trying to defend a tier 1. Monkey's going to try to defend on the bot lane. He's going to get Firefly being used. The net nicely dodged. What play by Monkey. And now he's going to go invisibly uh, for the Chen. Chen knows he's probably going to die. We'll send the Naga back home. And the question is, who's going to pick up the last sit? Gyrocopter will. Individual play from Monkey right now is extremely impressive in this game. He's, he's a very good player. Like, he is no joke. Yeah, and he's showing it in this particular game. Because if that net hit, there was going to be no kill happening right there. Nope. Yeah, so well played. They, they would have both gotten away. So this is a good and time to do a quick item check, unless you have some point to talk about. I did, but I forgot, so let's do an item check. <laughs> let's do it quickly, do an item check. You talked about the naked blink dagger. Um, it's it's up and nothing else is up on monkey fun is trying to go for a black king bar There's a man stop being finished that can level one I imagine almost being done. He does have that 1400 gold So can pick it up right now if he wants to do so Venomancer with arcane boots and nothing else Meanwhile on the dire side Vanguard on Nagasari making her a little bit tankier arcane boots on him as well as on the Chen mechs being completed between mech and ooh, A little bit of engagement happening on the top lane although I think must got to be a little bit more careful if he's him because Boogie don't mess Gotta be careful. Ah, as I say that, they'll blink dagger out forward. He could not get the fog. Maybe a little bit of spike, a little bit of lag. And Boog is trying to spin his way out their face with being extremely effective. And massive TP coming in right now. Psalm Siren being cast. Boogie does not have the cooldown for his ultimate until a couple more seconds. Fun does have his black hole. So this is going to be an awkward, very, very awkward moment. Are they going to use a flaming lasso? Yes, they will. You can see Korea doing massive amount of damage. But the black hole still not being casted right now. Hand of God. And that Naga still alive. Still alive right now. 
Finally, the black hole, she's gonna go down, and looks like the champ will be going down as well. Rudy's gonna go down. That black hole, he waited forever. Where is the Omni Slash? It did not get casted, of course. Uh oh, he's gonna try to TP out. He will be able to make it out there alive. I thought it was gonna be a horrible team fight for Root Gaming, but enough teleport scroll. Critically, Korea came in, and uh, he really gave his team the damage they needed. Absolutely. I think. They should have just backed up after the Naga sleep. Like, they could not have won that fight, especially with the black hole being up. Like, they knew that black hole was up. I don't think they should have engaged at all. But maybe they thought they could take it. I don't know. If the yeah. Jakiro setup with Naga is it's extremely powerful when Jakiro gets all his spells off like that, but they just couldn't bring him down fast enough. And to be honest, I thought Naga would have died a lot quicker. The, the mech and the Chen uh, heal really kept himself alive, especially with the Vanguard. But to be honest, Naga's not exactly a high DPS hero at this stage of the game. Riptide is nice and all, but yeah, it was not enough. The Twin Head Dragon uh, stuff was, didn't, didn't seemingly it was powerful either. Boogie, he is going to get stunned up. He's probably going to spin away this rocket. I hope he sees the rocket coming. The rocket is behind him right now. Korea, oh no, Korea just going to get down very easily. They are going to get get a kill on Fed A, but I think Fun is going to be dropped as well, unless we're going to have some nice scale. It's on cooldown right now. And there you go, the right clicks. He's going to TP out live again. <laughs> the game of TP out Broccoli is going to go down, but the Venom Master... Uh, sacrifice for Enigma, that's uh, gonna be fine. Meanwhile, power, Lust... Power. We're gonna see Chen getting gone on. Lust will have one more blink. Chen has no chance. No, but Naga's gonna TP it. If Lust gets, uh, net, he ghost. almost certainly... He's yes. gonna ghost up to the net. That's ex incredibly smart of him. Um, he hasn't got enough mana to TP. He has one blink. <laughs> he's in trouble. <laughs> oh, you think? <laughs> he's freaking in the middle of the face right now. One hit. Bam. Okay, <laughs> I was gonna say, is he gonna TP out right? This game is just hilarious. I gotta say, I'm glad to be able to cast in this game because this is, this is, we saw, you know, Juggernaut solo mid, we see Gyrocopter. That was almost a TP out, but great game so far here. But BKB stunned on Enigma, and we saw a TI2, what a BKB Enigma can do against Naga Siren. So uh, this is probably the best item he can be getting. I was predicting a mech rush early on, but this makes a lot more sense. But to be honest, they really need that mech as well. I mean, Venomancer is trying to finish it by himself, but he, it's really, really delayed. Yeah, and I wanted to say other important things really quick. Cool. One, Batrider has force. This means that the Queen of Pain, Queen of Pain might just go for an Ags now at this point. Uh, she might go for a Necro book, but probably not. Point is, she's going to have some burst damage. Is that? That is an illusion. Yep. Anyway, I'll talk about this later because we're going to see a big engage on Roshan. We're seeing them moving into position. Batrider is ready to go. This will not go well if um, they do, don't get Black Hole. But anyway, Rudy on the Twin Night Dragon is taking so much damage. Oh, wow, he's going to live for really long. But Naga Siren's going to get pulled by the Batrider. We see Jug spinning, running away from the fight. Korea is dealing a ton of damage. Doesn't even matter. Naga Siren sends off the sleep, but she's going to die to the Firefly. And Chen has not got a Snowball's chance in hell. Oh, man. That Twin Night Dragon being picked up right in the beginning of I really... Lost a lot of damage and now Feta is trying to run away, but you're really not going to be running from that Queen of Pain. Trying to TP out Malefice on cooldown. No! He's going <laughs> to TP out! The game of TPs! Monkey's going to get trapped on the high ground here. I'm very surprised that Root just went in so bravely. I mean, you got to keep... Oh, spinning coming from Boogie. Boogie's still on the run right now. He's popping the drum. It's moving so fast. He does have a regen. We will be popping it right now. Has Omni Slash. He could go for it right now. He will. The Ghost Scepter gets immediately popped. Korea taking all the charges. No, he's going to jump to Monkey as well. Nobody Nobody dies here on the Radiant side. It's going to force out buyback on Juggernaut. Wow, he has expended a lot of his gold. He was at 2,600. Now just has a Yasha. And, well, still 1,600 to show for it right now. But this time, it's back. It's time for Root to get back. I don't think they can really take another fight. They expended a lot of their resources. But Black Hole's back up. Black Hole's up. Yeah. yeah. That's the major thing. And it looks and like Queen of... Slashes down. Yeah, Queen of Pain Ultimate just came back on. And, you know... But Korea is very, very low. He has his own Black King Bar finish after Mansum. And this guy is farming like a madman. But they really can don't have the initiation. As I say that, they're going in, disrupting this. And Korea is walking right in. He's going for the Black Hole. He's go Yeah, no, he's scaring it. There you go. Black Hole on two carries. Somebody, for the love of God, kill that Aegis. Aegis is going to get picked up here by the back, um, by the Batrider. And looks like Naga is going to die to the Firefly. Root Gaming right now. Great offenses being mounted. And they're chasing people down. Batrider is going to get one more kill against the Twin Head Dragon. And it is time to get out for the Dire Squad. Fede is looking for people TV around. He does see, uh-oh, Malefus on the high ground. And, and, no TP scroll. No TP scroll on him, but I think he has teammate backup here. Fede looking around. Oh, gets juked. 
He's gonna try to cut towards his tower. He's gonna make it. I think he's gonna make it. Fede not gonna go for it. Now he is gonna be seen and he is being pinged out, but nobody nearby. These team fights are absolutely insane right now. This is ridiculous. This is, um, these team fights are going back and forth so much. Um, Roots finally started to be able to take a more, um, I guess, a uh, aggressive stance in these team fights mm -hmm. simply because they have the BKB on Enigma. But look at how mobile Root is. Dagger Force on Batrider. They got the four staff blink on Queen of. Gyrocopter is really freaking fast, and like Venomancer slows down the en entire enemy team. Like, Root can just out position RCTIC at this point, I think. And to be honest, what are you gonna do when Bat or when Enigma walks in and just pops his BKB, right? Like, he doesn't even need to have the. Bl I mean, he obviously needs to have the black hole, but the fact that he just runs in with BKB, suddenly your your entire team. You're dancing around that. It, it, it just makes positioning a nightmare. Sure, you think you have things like you know the Naga Sign sleep and the net to slow things down, but still, it, it, you just have too many heroes, too many stuff to maneuver around. And suddenly, you're on the run, and you know being on the run against a Bat Rider, a Queen of Pain, is not where you want to be at. Yeah, and the unsung hero for this game, Venomancer. We haven't mentioned anything about him, but you know what? He's getting like three man gills off every time, so they're trying to run away. And all of a sudden, they can't because his gales are like pinpoint every single time. 50% you know, slow is no joke, uh, no matter what stage of the game you're in right now. They want Fat A. They see Fat A coming right now, but really, he could just walk back and TP out uh, against, at least against that rocket. He is going to load Dars, but that load Dars rocket will still follow, so he's going to have to tank the rocket right now. He does, and he's going to just go back on, <laughs> on the run. Back in the mid lane, Naga Illusions chasing away Lus. Lus is going to be fine. So, very sad that we didn't see that Dagon build. I, I thought it was going to be completely legit, but going for a little bit more mobility play, which is another way to kind of tackle the tackle the Dire team, and still very effective. Yeah, no, I really thought that he was going to do it. I think he was considering doing it. Oh, he's going to go on the Jakiro. Gets all of his spells off except the Sonic Wave. Jakiro is almost certainly dead. Oh my god, he's going to TP wow. out! <laughs> Oh man. 135 gold saving lives, multiple lives That's this game. wonderful. I think I think the Sonic Wave was a little slow. I think as soon I, as he I got Ice Bath, it. he should have just as soon as he saw the TP and I think he should have just, you know, gave yeah, it. Yeah, I don't want to criticize, but I think he, like his spells were like ready. I think he just didn't want to ult. You and know, like he held it for too long and then he's like, Oh crap, I gotta do it. Yeah, less less uh, missing a little bit uh, here and there, but it's, it's all good. His team is doing quite well, leading by nine kills. The gold chart heavy in the advantage of the radiant side. It, I mean, you could when you're casting this game, you can see the radiant team is leading, but I feel like it's not as big of a lead that normally a 1200, 12, uh, 1200 gold suggests, or twelve thousand gold suggests. I feel like if things go right, Fede and his team could just come back. Like they just need one good team fight. Omni slash, you need to pick off a couple of heroes and. To be honest, they could win a team fight and suddenly claim a couple of towers and they were right back in this game. Um, here is, they're going to be their biggest issue in the game. They are going to win the late game. Probably. Like, I think we can maybe agree on that. They've got, that they've got really good late game. Yeah. But the issue is Batrider's got BKB and Force and Dagger. Yeah. That's an issue. I mean, they're going I mean, to be able to take someone for like no risk. Oh, and this Naga Siren is going to be the person they take and is going to die. Yeah, you talked about the BKB on Monkey, and you know, we all know what Song of Siren can do, and one of the things that he cannot do is to shut down BKB. Korea's got his BKB, Enigma's got his BKB. So when the Song of Siren Ultimate's going on, like, Regaming could still fight, and they put up a huge fight at that too, because they still do massive amount of damage, and of course, magically immune and whatnot. Fede takes down a uh, tower on the top lane, has Midas, Lothars, and has a kind of a a lone headdress or something. Maybe he thought he was gonna go uh, mech and then stop and whatnot. But at this point, he needs to finish that Siphon Vice instantly because he, they they need more disabled, they need more damage, and they just don't have enough of it. They need to they need to force Batrider to BKB ahead of time. Here's what's gonna happen. Batrider, you oh, there's gonna be almost certainly a kill on Chug. Ooh, quick. And he's gonna get grabbed and he's getting right clicked. Will he Omni Slash or will he just get stuck? Oh, oh, he's trying to, he's trying to get oh, it, off, it off, but I think this is going to just be a waste of a cooldown. Oh, not going to be enough. The Silent Siren comes in right now. How much can they do? The BKB, the Black Hole, that's going to get the Twin Head Dragon. Didn't get the champ, but still gets one kill, making sure they're still alive right now. The net does find Rufun. Wow, nice recovery here from the Dire Side. 
RCFIC, they, well, it looks like the... Oof, nice four sap hour here. He's gonna be completely fine. Trees breaking in against Monkey. Monkey, Blink on CD. Does have the Agents Immortal, at least for now. His teammates not assisting. Does he have Blink on cooldown? He does, and he's gonna get out. Yeah. Like I said, good play for Monkeys. And, oh, I think he's trying to bait. Oh, yeah, they're gonna go on the... But no reveal, I think? Yeah, no reveal, so... Meanwhile, top lane got pressured that entire time by Kareem. They're at their tier 3, and he is about to get his, I'm guessing, Butterfly. Shotgun would have been bad, but uh, I think Butterfly makes a little bit more sense, considering that he's going for a more of a farming, carrying build, and, and suddenly, even his illusions do a significant amount of damage if you do have the uh, Song agility bonus, which he does, so it's going to be insane. At this point, map control heavily in the side, heavily in the advantage of Root. Observer ward very deep into the enemy jungle, and there's very very low counter or even defensive warding for the dire squad. So going to a dire vision right now, you can see that they're completely playing blind. And when you're playing blind against a blink dagger bat rider, a queen of pain, and to be honest, a gyro copter is still effective solo killer at this stage of the game. Like you're in big trouble. Yeah, the second someone pushes out a tiny bit by themselves, they will get killed by bat rider. Yep. And you see what he's doing. This is so smart. He's not showing where he is on the map. So if he shows that where he is on the map, they can go to the other part of the map. But if he doesn't show, they can't go anywhere. It's like the Pudge Factor, you know? Yep. And there you go. Blink Dagger initiation uh, right in front of the tower. They want Boogie. I don't think they can actually kill him. Oh, he dodges the Sonic Wave with the spin. And suddenly the tables has turned. Less will blink out. Korea just stays there. The send back here from the Chen. Uh, the cooldown of the Queen of Pain ultimate is something to be concerned about. The Bat Rider ultimate, not so much. But I do believe Dyer does have a slight opening. They can farm a little bit more aggressively in the next minute or so. Uh, Feta is still doing the still doing the Furion thing. He does have Scythe of Ice Gold. I wonder if he's going to be picking up straight or maybe saving for buyback. We'll see. I don't think buyback can help him at all. I think if he dies and buys back, what will he do in a team fight? That's true. He doesn't do anything. Yep. And it's so. not like he can pressure Rax, so he should just get it. I think they're trying to smoke gank it. There's no way he's going to get caught by this. Okay, I guarantee I'm going to eat my words because of that, but he shouldn't get caught by this. <laughs> Oh, meanwhile, he's he's still trying to do the Ghetto Furion, you know. I say Ghetto Furion, he's he's just doing the Furion thing, which is pushing. But, they're closing in. <laughs> if anybody, oh, the creep has seen him right now, and yeah. immediate conversions. Now, he does have the Lodar's Edge, or it's a Shadow Play. Is there any detection? We, have an we saw the gem. There's a gem, there you go. Here we go. Fede is still walking around, but I think he should be fine now. Yeah. Ah, oh, it's close. They might oh, have cool. saw the remnants of that uh, burst of TP. Back in the mid lane, though, looks like a little bit of engagement. Carrillo, just illusions. Just illusions. Yeah, I, I see that, uh, that on the minimap all the time, and I get really panicked, and nope, it's nothing important. It's Naga Siren, man. She tricks me every time. Now, speaking of Naga Siren, does have the purge play finish it. Let's do another quick item check. Sacrifice is picked up here. Uh, that is Fade in the mid lane, almost getting blinked upon. Ooh, Shadow Blade. Just in time. Yeah, not too much item pickup, at least not the level of item pickup compared to the Radiant side. As uh, Scythe of Ice almost done on the Queen of Pain. Korea does have the Butterfly finish. Monkey, not too much after BKB, but does have that one uh, 2k goal. So could pick up a like, Ultimate Orb. Or BOT, that would be a good I think it's that way if Prophet goes somewhere, he can just go and kill him. Yep, but at this point, they're looking at the high ground, trying to break it in and. What is going to be the defense looking like for the Dire team? I mean, they have Song Siren, Blink, BKB, oh, oh my god, that's DGS, that's three man, and suddenly every AoE raining down. Looks like the sendback is going to be against him, against the uh, Juggernaut, but Naga, no such luck, and they're buying back, but that that's the rhetorical question you asked earlier, what, is it, what are they going to do after a buyback? In fact, that's going to be enough to defend, apparently. Korea, perhaps a little bit of trouble. They got Omni Slash. He's gonna pop the BKB and just man fight out, carrying everybody right now. He's flat cannoning, right clicking a tower, and the flat damage is bringing everybody down low. The TP back on Batrider, defending the push. Sonic Wave not hitting too much, but the, regardless, they are gonna get the mid racks, and the, def the racks will be defended. Song Siren comes in right now. Here we go. Omni Slash still up. Is it up? Yes, Omni Slash is available. It's ready to go. Root Korea most likely will die here, as well as fun. Everybody's gonna die here, but I think. More or less a Pyrrhic victory for the Dire team. As well, Naga Siren in a little bit of trouble. Naga Siren's gonna get right click down, blink back out for both of these heroes, and I do believe it's gonna be a safe retreat. Yeah, it looks like they'll get out. Oh, maybe we spoke too soon. Lust is getting damaged. Up. He has a four staff and blink and a ghost staff. Oh, okay, he's not gonna die. But in the meantime, Fawn pops his BKB. He's not getting damaged, but he will get right clicked, and he's not fast enough to run away from Boogie. Aww. No, he's just gonna fall. 
close enough, but the Rax is going to get claimed. Their Rax protected because Batrider quick TP out. I gotta say though, we don't generally see naked black hole opening, you know, like that. No, you see, you see, stuff you, see like set you see setups. You see setups. He just I, went man mode. That was he beautiful. He needs a wheelbarrow to carry, carry his testicles around. I mean, like, just blinking into an entire base by yourself. Like, that's that's so... I don't know. That's no just so fear. aggressive. I really like no to see fear. it. Well, well play here. Well play. And, oh, you know, when you do hit the three-man black hole, that's where we scream in joy. But when you miss it, you can be like, you know, what, what was he doing? Yeah. And it's that kind of, a, you know, back and forth. But, yeah, you know, so well played. And at this point here, one racks up about... 14,000 go up on the Radiant side. I cannot see the Radiant team losing this game. I don't think I can either. I mean, um, the Dire might have better late game, but they don't have the item show for it. No, and I think the biggest issue is that there are hexes up now on Roots. Yes. And that means they can burst anyone. Like, my concern before was that even if Batrider, like, initiates on someone, if it's a Naga, I didn't think that they could burst down fast enough. Lust is going to be maybe in trouble. No way, he's just way too mobile. They can't even pin him down without a hex. Yeah, in between Ghost Scepter, Force Staff, and as well as the natural, you know, blink, uh, he, he's gonna be absolutely fine. He's just toying with them. In fact, he's drawing multiple people. They're not farming, they're not EXPing. In fact, Lust is farming in their jungle. So, at this point, the Roshan's gonna be attempted by Korea. And Korea does have lifesteal at this point. So, he, he literally stood in front of the enemy base and took on the enemy team. He could do it with relative ease at this point. Yeah. Everybody thinks of Gyrocopter as Gyrocopter is like a mediocre carry. Medi oh wow, there's gonna be an engage coming on from Monkeys. He's pulling the Naga Siren in. There's, we're, gonna, we're gonna see a Sonic Wave. We see Naga on the retreat. Oh, 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 the Flame Break messed him up. Oh man, that was some cock block Flame Break. But regardless, they got, got enough. They will pick off these guys one by one by one. As you, you can really run against this team. The backdoor attempt coming from Fede, but. Rude is always there available. They will see him. The Hex and the TP out. Of course, this is a game of TP, so he will make it alive. But, you know, this game this game is uh, well out of reach of RCTIC. Yeah, I, I would say so, too. How many people have lived on, like, 100 HP or less with the TP this game? Like, at least six or seven. Yeah, but this is ridiculous. Earlier, you were talking about the carry potential of Gyrocop here. I'm, I'm interested, interested oh, yeah. to hear your thoughts on that. Every single- oh, hang on, he might be getting gone on, he's gonna try to Manta style out BKB, he's just manning up- oh no! Huge black holes, everybody's gonna die, expect the GG. Dear lord, that's like two, three men in a row. Wow, that was sick enigma play, sick enigma play, reminiscent of DGC, I might have to say so myself. We can come some right now, but the Hex and the right click coming in from Korea, can they really slow down this push? Korea, it's just life stealing, he's farming in the middle of team fight. no F given, but the Omni Slash does dodge everything, forces the Aegis to use, I don't think they can actually fight this though, even with the Aegis down. He no, is... he can fight all of them. Yep, yeah, Korea, going at it. I don't think the Dyer could fight this, is what I'm trying to say. Korea definitely could fight all of them. The flat cannon coming out, pull down, uses it immediately, and uh, Rudy about to go down. Yeah, oh, nope. That could have been worse if that was the uh, the high damage Chen nuke, but he got lucky. It was the low on. And the Korea barely in the makes, meantime, barely makes it out alive. So we will have some peace and quiet to discuss Skyrocopter as a carry. As nope, just kidding. Rudy <laughs> getting initiated on Hex Shivas. Wow, the late game. It looks like uh oh. Chen shows his hair, uh, head a little bit much, and uh, Flame Break, ooh, the Flame Break pushing him out. And the test of fame, the return kill, that was pretty nice. And now Naga trying to do some damage. He perhaps is actually going to even get the kill with Purge. Yeah, he's going to pop the Purge Blade right now. Forward Staff outwards, Blink Dagger cooling down just a bit. He's going to Blink out just fine. Nicely Sick played. Sick plays from Monkeys we'll forever. still have the Hex, perhaps, or chasing, chasing, giving him the extra movement speed. Oh, he's within Hex range. He's going to get Hex, and Purge should be next. Force Staff cooling down in just a bit. Four, three, Firefly breaking out of the trees and net. Finding him. You can't still force. He's going to be forcing. No, no. Finally going to go down. Sonic Wave, he's still alive. He's going off the map. <laughs> this is some Hex stuff. He's got 40 HP. Fat is very low. He's going to TP out. Meanwhile, though, Looks like the Naga Siren, a little bit of trouble. Lust come in right now. Blink, nice dodge of the uh, uh, of the scream, but the poison will find him, and that's gonna be enough. Monkey, oh my god! Ten out of ten. <laughs> this is some sick play. I was sick. He's oh. he's my player of the game. I mean, everybody, uh, DGC, or excuse me, Enigma's my player of the game, but still, like we, we saw. They some, all played really well. They Every all played well. Person played really well. Wow. 
I it's gotta say, that's a little bit cheap, though. The fact that he could go off the map like that, I mean... How do you kill supposed, that guy? You're not supposed to be able to do that. The way yeah. the, the edges of the map are supposed to work is you get, like, super high ground vision, so you have to be, like, really close to it to hit the person. But in Dota 2, the way it works is you just can't hit him. That's it's, it's a little bit silly. Can spells go off the map, though? Like, can you fire I don't, an I don't know how spells work. I just know how the Batrider thing works. Yes. Well, I need it's, like, it's, like, super high ground. It's weird. It's, like, a mechanic that's, like, specific to that. It's all like only useful against bat riders. No, it looks like they're gonna focus out on broccoli. Look at the huge burst damage. They are gonna bring him down, but here comes Korea man molding it up. The rocket barrage not hitting too much. At this point, he could try on flat cannon and hit building and kill just about everybody else. They see Fade. Fade trying to run out. He does have TP out, but he's not gonna make this TP out. Look at Korea. At this point, those rocket barrage still very respectable damage. Illusions being Naga being destroyed instantly. BKB, or excuse me, BKB just makes a fun makes a joke out of that Naga Siren ultimate. At this point, Korea chasing everybody away. And uh, GG's already been called, and to be honest, one of the best game I've cast in a long while. This was a great game. Yeah. This was, uh, it was exciting to watch. This is why I wanted to see Root play. Well, we could be following more Root gaming as, who, do, who doesn't want to follow Root after a performance like this? I know. And with the Raxus being destroyed, you, uh, USA Chance being uh, started by the Dire. And, and uh, the, the end game screen showing up. This is a very, very good time to tell you guys who we are. I'm Luminous from DotaCommTiers.com and my co-caster is ShredKid from DotaCommTiers.com as well. I'll be including links to our YouTube channels, Facebooks, and whatever. Please help us, support us, follow us, subscribe, all that stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed this particular cast. And uh, this is definitely on YouTube if you're wondering why. Oh, this, this game will be on YouTube. This is, this is a great game. <laughs> this is a great game indeed. Here we go. Root Gaming move move on in the Frag Bite. Thor Frag Bite open qualifier number three. Looking very, very poised to go deep into the tournament. Hope you guys enjoyed this cast. For now, this is Luminous and Shred Kit signing off.